so good morning uh, yeah let's get this done now don't worry about the uh, rear part uh, a video would either have been uploaded already or will shortly get uploaded but the point is just to do a follow-up on the last step it video that I did okay uh, before beginning just uh, wet cloth just wipe the entire area clean so that once you open the valves uh, no debris enters blowing some air can come in handy at uh, these uh, places these cracks that you see here so the last uh, check was done at 13,500 kilometers bike has done about 20,000 now uh, slightly overdue but yeah no harm in checking these are the tools that I'll be using I'll go through these uh, as and when I open up things but yeah so Basically, either you will be doing it uh, or checking it at the pre uh, periodic interval or uh, maybe you're having some troubles. So the symptom for that would be while you're trying to accelerate, you would kind of feel uh, restrained as if something is uh, just, you know, kind of uh, holding it back. Uh, it's not going to be that free revving, not going to be that free going. In the cold, it will be okay. But uh, when the engine heats up, say in, you're in traffic or after 20, 30 kilometers, uh, then the problem would even get worse because of the thermal expansion of the walls. Uh, it will just not seal up properly. Uh, tight, if it is too tight, uh, it can even lead to, you know, knocking, uh, pre-ignition knocking sound. Other symptoms would be poor fuel economy. If they are too loose, of course, uh, immediate uh, symptoms would be that you would hear that ticking, too much of ticking kind of a noise. So eventually even they are a problem so checking it is obviously a good thing and that's why I'm redoing it. So before we begin, uh, do remember intake RE has recommended 0 0.08 mm to 0.10 and for exhaust 0.23 to 0.25. So if it is below 0 0.08 that means uh, it has loosened and if it is above 0 0.10 on the intake that means it has to be tightened and brought within this. Somewhere around point, around point uh, zero 0.09 uh, would be the sweet spot. Not keeping it at the extreme limits would come in handy. Same for exhaust, 0.23. If it is uh, 0.23 or below, it has to be uh, you know slightly loosened. And if it is above 0.25, it has to be tightened. And some more points to remember, it has to be checked when engine is cold. And this is the most critical one check in compression stroke of TDC. So basically this is what I meant uh, intake, compression, ignition or power stroke and exhaust stroke and this is compression this is where the fuel has just been taken in the piston has moved up to the top dead center both the valves are closed and after that ignition happens and after that exhaust and just after exhaust there is again uh, a point where both the valves have closed as the ignition gases have been pushed out and uh, just before ignition so there is a point on the crank as well the mark that will be looking that it would be at top dead center here as well but this is not where we have to check it so compression stroke now let's get going let's see what it is so the tank is uh, already off next up we we'll remove the tappet covers 8 mm here 8 mm same on the other side and then 8 mm here and then 8 mm on the other side as well. So let's open these. So easy access on the right side when you see all these cables. It would be slightly helpful if you can just move this out. So this one, press it and pull it back. And then this 10 mm and just loosen these so that's off as well next since i'm already here i'll remove the spark plug so removing the spark plug would basically uh, do two things first when we rotate the crank i'll show you later there would not be any uh, compression forces because all the air would escape out so that would make moving the crank a bit easier and second also to exactly precisely gauge uh, where TDC is that's one old school way of doing it I do like it there are markings I'll 
show you with the markings as well but yeah let's get this on okay so now on the left side and we are gonna open up these these are to give us access to rotate the crankshaft with that 80 mm spanner next we are gonna move to this one this is where we'll get the marking and this is 17 mm So that's done as well. One thing that I forgot, uh, this evap hose coming underneath here. Uh, as you can see, this is connected here. Just use a set of pliers and remove this so that this can be moved a bit up so that you have free access here. So next up, rotating the crankshaft. That is going to require an uh, 18 mm. And here we go. Now the next question is how to rotate it. Uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise now service manual says uh, rotate it clockwise that would be like this so uh, you see that arrow that means that crankshaft is rotating this way that would be anti-clockwise so rotating this spanner that I have that would get the job done basically so there it goes rotating it and this is the engine motion and again another camera is capturing what is going on the front and there we go again still rotating anti-clockwise and again back to that arrow now we can go slightly back and as you see we are at that TDC mark this one T TDC checking at the top okay this is loose so that means that currently we are at uh, the compression top dead center now let's again complete an entire cycle and you would see soon that intake valve would oh sorry exhaust valve would come back up because we were at compression now the intake valve is opening and then again as you can see this is somewhere close to piston again coming back up and then again exhaust happening i hope you get the idea and that is how the cycle basically goes so why is enfield saying that we should rotate it clockwise because in the manual everywhere repeatedly it is written uh, it is written that we should be uh, rotating it clockwise that would mean that we are going back in this direction like this the only explanation that comes to mind is uh, that on Himalayan the nut that you see in there uh, that is attached to the magneto that actually opens uh, anti-clockwise but maybe they are worried that we might accidentally get it open uh, and that is what it takes here if I just push on this slightly harder it will just crank it open uh, and that is why it is very very important that we remove these spark plugs so that there are no uh, compression forces playing against and uh, we have less chance of opening this nut here now is it the end of the world if we accidentally end up uh, loosening this no that just means we have to remove this uh, casing and then apply the tools and then tighten it back but uh, that is why I guess I mean that is the only explanation that they have said that rotate it clockwise but no harm no foul there are other reasons why everyone else does not do it like say the fuel pump uh, sorry the uh, oil pump that is supposed to work in one direction only if we start to rotate it in a different direction that would mean that it is instead of uh, pulling the fuel from the sump it is reverting it back so minor adjustments like rotating it uh, this way or this way can be made so like say here we are here but if say we miss it and we get to this point and if we have to move back we can rotate it clockwise this way or play it safe and just rotate it clockwise no harm in doing that as per se so let's take an example and see if what happens if I start rotating it clockwise so that would mean okay this way now the cycles on the top would be different if you can see so what will happen is we will have the intake and just after that we would get to see the exhaust wall going down so that means that this is in reverse and the engine would feel a lot harder to move 
clockwise as well. But there is no harm. I mean, as such, in long term, it can be done this way as well. See, intake going down, and then straight away exhaust going down. But actually, in the uh, actual four stroke cycles, what is supposed to happen is that while we rotate it anti-clockwise as per the motion of the uh, crank, see the intake valve is going down, then nothing will happen for certain degree because that means that the piston is coming up. No valve is actually doing any cycle and that is why compression stroke. So this is compression happening. Once compression is done, the spark would happen and as soon as the spark happened, the uh, exhaust valve would start going down as you see hope this makes sense let's continue once you see that T here it is that T and that line that you just marker that you just see after T that should be aligned to this arrow right here T would mean that okay TDC you rotate it slightly further that brings us to F. This marker, this would mean that this is where the spark plug fires. And yeah, for the next cycle. So this is what we are aiming for. But as I mentioned, and this is the most important part, the engine would be twice at this mark. Uh, once at compression stroke and the second time at uh, just after the uh, exhaust stroke. So remember, we have to do it at compression. It's worth mentioning here that engine does a complete 72 degree of cycle and uh, to complete its uh, four stroke cycle. So after 360 degree this would appear then again after 360 degree this would appear. The first 360 would be uh, the false one uh, that would just happen after the ignition uh, stroke has finished. It would be tight you can feel it both intake valve and exhaust valve if you check at the top would be tight like they are right now and that would mean that okay we are at the uh, false to TDC so if you rotate it again uh, the next cycle would be for the true TDC top dead center so let's do that and there you go TDC and then again aligning the marker just look it from as close to the wheel as you can to have it properly aligned otherwise it would just be a bit up and down if rotation is needed you can slightly move it to align so the camera angle is kind of not doing justice yeah now it is as you can see this arrow this marker on the chases is properly aligned the marker just below T now if we check above we would see that there is free movement as you can see it can move and the same would go for intake as well and yeah and this is where we are gonna align uh, we are gonna adjust the walls uh, back at the top remember the intake had the limit of uh, 0 0.08 to 0 0.10 mm so we'll just start with this and see if it can go in Yes, it can and it is free. So I think we might be able to get even 9 mm. Here we go. Now checking with 9. Okay. Yeah, even 9 can go. So that means it's worth checking for 10 as well. If it is above 10, we might have to readjust it. Yeah. So the 10 can go in as well. It is a bit on the loose side. So we are going to bring it close to somewhere. I mean... It should feel more resistance at 10 basically. It is just moving in slightly freely. If it would have been less than 8, as I said, sorry to repeat, but uh, if it had been, uh, if the 8 would not have been able to get through, that would have meant that it is too tight and then we would have to loosen it slightly. Now, this is where this tool will come in handy and uh, for intake one, we'll be using a 10 mm spanner because uh, the ring spanner that I have, uh, there is just not enough clearance and it uh, is just not getting in. Uh, maybe I need a new thinner spanner. But anyways, rotating it this way would loosen it. Here you go. So I've removed the 0.09 mm strip. I'll place it under the adjustment 
rocker then again with this I'll tighten this not completely I should be able to feel some drag then again checking now I feel no drag so that means I have tightened it too much dial back slightly Yeah, I can feel some drag. Now just leaving it here, making sure it does not fall in. Unfortunately, there's still not enough room, so I got a smaller uh, 10 mm spanner. That should make room. Yeah, this one does it. Keeping this with my hand in one place and then making sure that this does not rotate. Checking for the drag, seems okay. And here we go. Done. Yeah, nine mm, still feel drag. And that's it, that's intake done. Zero nine, if I said 0.9, I'm sorry. If I said nine, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be 0 0.09. Let's move on to the exhaust one. That's better for an angle and uh, I don't have uh, 23 mm so adding 8 and 15 would make it 23 again it should not be tighter than 23 23 should easily get in if it is not getting in that means it is too tight and we might have to loosen it so as you can see perfect drag perfect everything so checking for uh, 24 would mean 0 0.09 mm and 0 0.15 adding them up let's see if we can get that does not look like though well what do you know it does okay yeah so we have 24 with 25 going then which is the maximum limit if it is loose than 25 then we would have to dial it a bit back and bring it between 20.23 and 0.25 no this 25 one is not going in so yeah this is a screwdriver uh, just held it firmly so that I don't drop it in just moved it as I rotated uh, the crank to feel the top dead center let's just give it a shot and see if our markings are correct uh, this is just so you should be able to see if I move it down it is going slightly down so that means no ahead 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 and then again it is starting to go down so basically just have to feel if you can see that see going down maybe you can see now going down going up and then going down again so this this is where our TDC is. I'll quickly check with the torch if you have the same mark there. And yeah, perfect. Let me show you. See? T and then just below that, that mark aligned with this. And that was it. I have also washed uh, all these and cleaned them. At least these I can wash. So yeah, the rest is pretty simple. I don't want to waste your time as well. Just putting them back. Tappet covers will go back in 8 mm. Then the crank from where we're moving the crank that uh, case will go back in with the Allen key. That's 5 mm. Then put in this viewer uh, from where we were uh, checking the marks, close this in and then put the rest of the bike in. And that was it. I hope that makes sense. Thanks. Bye.